So the last time uh, we had class, we had started to look at the Amazon App Store, where we can publish our Android apps completely for free, without any developer's fee or anything, except for their um, commission that they take, the 30% of the sale of, the, of your app, just like every App Store. So we need to continue with that. Um, uh, the process, I hadn't finished it yet, I had five out of six uh, green check marks in my publication process. So that means I'm going to go back to uh, the Amazon developers website and continue my process. What we had left was the app asset screen because that's going to take a little bit of effort. We didn't have enough time at the end last time. So let's see what we need to do. You can go back to the web browser developer.amazon.com We created an account, and as I showed you, I'm creating that completely as just an educational purposes. It's fake, but I am going through the whole process. Um, you can decide to do the same thing about using a fake account or a real account. You will be able to remove your app later if you choose to remove it, although there isn't a button that says unpublish app. You do have to go through the help system and there's, it's, it's kind of buried, buried in there a bit. They don't want you to just remove your app that easily, although you can. It's just that you have to go through the help system. So I'm going to click sign in at the top right, and I'll sign in with the information I made up. I am a returning customer, so I'm going to sign in with that information. If you don't have that information from last time, well, you can try to retrieve it, or create a new account. So I'm signing in with the same account from last time. And at the top I'm in the dashboard view. I'll go over to the apps and services view. got one app. It's a question mark there. Uh, I haven't added my app icon yet. That's what that means. And so that's my project, platform. I haven't submitted it yet. So eventually I'll be seeing extra information there. Once I've submitted it, it'll say submitted or it'll say pending or something. And if I'm going to do a new version, version 2 and such, it'll let me know there's an upcoming version. If there are in-app items, that'll be listed as well. Well, I'm not finished with this current app. If you hover your mouse over the app, you'll get the gear at the end of the row. It doesn't appear till you hover over, and then you can hover your mouse over the gear. We have edit current version, manage in-app, other things, live app testing, advertising your app. We can do pretty advanced things such as log in with Amazon. Uh, oftentimes, if you notice, like on a social network, or many websites nowadays, if it asks you to create an account, it often asks you to create an account um, easier perhaps via Facebook or via Twitter. There's also login via Google, there's login via Amazon. So we have a way to set up our apps if we want some sort of like login information for our app, where Amazon, in a sense, can vouch for the user, can help you create the user account, and then they'll be able to log into your app. It's more of an advanced feature that you can look up on your own. But uh, I need to edit my current version. So it takes me up here that I've got five out of six complete. Notice the items in the gear are also listed at the top, the top row here. If I wanted to do notifications in that your app um, pops up and shows users information when they're not logged in, like every modern app. You know, Facebook alerts you that something's going on even if you're not in Facebook. We have these sorts of messaging, device messaging. So we have a lot that we can still do with the app depending what you're trying to do with your app. But I can't submit the app yet because I need 
images and multimedia. Let's spend some time there. If you go to that tab, this also has the same save and add button that you need to be careful about. We'll usually be clicking the regular yellow save button, not the save and add localized media. What well, that means is that I can add a version of my graphics for a certain locality, US for example, and then I can add different graphics uh, and branding for a different locality, like Mexico, let's say. So that would be what save and add localized media is. Um, at this point we're keeping it simple, we're just having one locality, one language, so we would be saving with a regular save. So we have a lot of general assets. Some of them are required, some of them are not. The ones that are not required, we'll probably skip them, but you can do them, of course. We need a small icon, that's a square graphic of 114 pixels. Ping transparency. So we need to have that graphic, a large 512 sized one with transparency, screenshots, we need 3 to 10 pings or JPEGs, either portrait or landscape of these various dimensions. I will say right away that the um, if you create that three and a half inch virtual device, it's smaller than the smallest dimension that they want. So you might have to uh, go up one level higher sized of a virtual device, or I believe there's already a built-in virtual device that is the right size. But if you were following my directions and creating the virtual device, the three and a half inch one, it's, it's too small. You can resize the screenshot in Photoshop, and we will create these screenshots in a little bit, but just keep in mind that it wants these particular dimensions. So I'm just going to make a note. Um, 480 by 800 is the minimum that I need. Pings or JPEG, no transparency. Promotional image is recommended. Notice it's not required, but I'm going to say that I highly recommend it. I'm going to say pretty much I would require it, and we will create one. This is a this is a, like a banner graphic. It's landscape only, so it's going to be wide, and it's going to be a banner that is a little bit more branding to advertise your app. It's recommended here, but if you take it over to Google Play eventually, Google Play is going to ask for all of these exact graphics, and Google Play is going to require a promotional one. So we may as well create it now for Amazon, because eventually I want to put this on Google Play, and I'll have the graphic ready. It's 1024 by 500. Optional is the video. We're, we're not going to create this one. It's optional, but I would encourage you to think about creating a video about your app, and I'll give you some tips about that a little later. Fire TV assets. Our app really isn't focused for the Fire TV uh, ecosystem, but here are a variety of icons and screenshots that uh, you would create. Okay. So dealing with the small and large icons, we'll do those first. Depending on your setup, hopefully you have saved on your flash drive, but if not, I can give you a quick copy. On my flash drive, a while ago, we, we created our app assets in part two of the class. So somewhere on my flash drive, I've got icon512 picks. It's still in the network folder. It's over on Android, in Campus Android 2. It's a, um, it's the icon for my app. Now, again, it's my app. So even if you get it out of the network folder, I would recommend Photoshop Elements. Even if you get it out of the um, network folder, you most likely want your own icon. You don't want um, the one I'm giving you because then your icon will look exactly the same as 
um, as mine. And you saw that when we looked at our classmates, we saw that when we look, if we look up our classmates, most students um, created their own icon. So when we spent that time working on the um, the icons, that was for that purpose. Some of them do have this um, like official icon. You can get that out of the college's website. Let's see, sdce.edu. It's under organization, style guide, and logos. So it's not the it's not the icon by itself. It's got text, and it gives it to you either in ping or EPS format. The ping version is going to be too small, so this is extra effort. I'm not going to go through the process. But if you want to use the official logo of the college, you would actually want to download the EPS version, the vector version, and then open it in Photoshop or Illustrator and size it to the 512. For us at the moment, I'm going to take a little detour to open up Photoshop. And even though I have my graphic from the previous semesters, I would recommend, or this previous months, I would recommend that uh, you have your own unique graphic. You most likely do somewhere on your on your flash drive. What you could do is get the copy from the network folder of my icon and change it. The icon's already 512 pixels. A while ago when we were designing these icons, I had said it's better to start off on a larger size and downsample it, downscale it, rather than starting with a small size and trying to upscale it because then you're going to lose quality. So I already started off with a, with a big sized one. Uh, I'm going to change a little bit of the color of my elements just to have something different. And obviously, I could spend some time on uh, on this, but I'm not going to spend too much time just because I want to um, get back into my publishing phase. I'm going to use the icon from before, but I'm just changing it a little bit. Um, I'm changing, you can double click these various elements like the text or the shape and just change the color or the shape or something. Or make your own icon as well. So we're probably at different levels at this point. Uh, maybe I'll give us like one minute to do something here because we need a, a unique icon. So let's, I'll give a will give us just you know literally just one minute or so. Uh, we need to have a graphic. Once you've got it ready, you want to file, export, save for web. We did that a while ago. And I want to save this new graphic. Transparency. Ping twenty four. 512 size, that's what Amazon is requesting, the large version. I can do the large one first, that one's ready. And again, that large icon will go here when we see, when we get this uploaded over to 
Amazon, your particular app's listing, will have the large icon like that. So that's what we're developing right now. I'll give you a moment to do that. You can borrow the picture from before and tweak it a little bit. All right, so that's something that you could be working on for a little bit, but I'm going to move on at this point. I've saved the graphic as how Amazon is asking for. It's 512 pixels by um, 512, ping 24. So back on Amazon.com, I need to then um, upload the 512 pixel size graphic. Now usually what happens when I'm when I'm showing this when I'm showing this in um, in a lecture 
I, I take a while to explain all of this, and at a certain point, Amazon logs me out because uh, I took too long. So I would say after you add an item, you can uh, save it because it always happens to me. I added all of these elements, and then it times out, it logs me out. So um, I guess I won't be able to really save it, but. So what's still required is the 114 sized icon based on the same one that I was working on. I can uh, go back to File, Export, Save for Web, and from this screen here I can downsample it to the 114 that it needs. So starting with the large sized version, shrinking it down is, uh, is okay to do, but if I had originally designed it at 114 and try to grow it, it may not give the best results. I'm going to save the 114 size. Give it whatever name you want, save that. And then on Amazon, I can upload it, and I've got the 114 sized one. So that little icon is going to be the uh, icon of your app that displays in various Amazon screens. Those two are required. We're going to do screenshots in a moment, but I want to do this promotional image while I have the other ones in mind. So this one says it's a 1024 by 500. I, I have this graphic, which is 512 by 512. Um, this icon is going to be the basis for my promotional image. So what I'm going to do is go up to the image menu and go to image uh, duplicate. I want to make a copy of what I've got here so far. I don't want to change the 512 graphic. I want to work with a copy. So if I duplicate, it'll ask for a name. I'll call that um, promo ten twenty four by five hundred. So I've got the, um, the square one and this rectangular one. My starting point with this one is the original icon, which then I need to go up to the image menu, image size. I need to resize this a little bit. This is bigger than what Amazon is requesting. It, it wants a maximum height of 500. This graphic is 512. It's 12 pixels too big. It's also not wide enough. So the way I would do it is image, then image size, and um, change these units here to pixels, and put the height for 500. And it's OK that the width is also 500, because I'm going to fix that on the next step. But here I want to resize my starting point down to 500 height in pixels. Make sure that's pixels. If you don't change pixels, you're going to change it to 500 inches, which is completely wrong. So 500 pixels, click OK. So it shrunk it down vertically a little bit. Next I would go to Image Menu, Canvas Size. Change these units to pixels also. So this is saying it's 500 by 500. I need 1024 width by 500 height. So I'm going to add extra space to my canvas, nearly five, more than 500 pixels. Well, this is going to add an equal amount on the left and the right side of the image. You see what this means here is, starting from the center of the graphic, expand it out to be 1024 wide. Well, this icon then is going to be right in the center of my, of my graphic. And my concept is this is a banner image, a wide image. So I'm going to have the icon 
of the app on the left side or the right side, and then on the opposite side some text that advertises or explains this app. So I want to say, click on the center left column here, meaning leave this graphic alone and then add to the right the pixels that we need to get from 500 to, to 1024. So it'll add the extra 524 pixels. If we had left it in the middle, which is the default, it would have added you know, 256 pixels or whatever to the left and to the right. I want to start from the left and add toward the right. Then we can click OK. I'm going to double click the hand icon, the hand icon, double click hand just to zoom out completely. Double click the magnifying glass to zoom in 100%. Double click the hand to zoom out. My screen's a little smaller, so I have to zoom out a little bit just to see the, the complete graphic. Yours, I think your screens are larger, so you'll, you'll see everything. Even if you double click the, the magnifying glass for a 100% zoom, so if you have something larger like that. In any event, now you see the icon has moved over to the left, and I've got some space on the right. The point of this is then I'm going to add a little bit of text on the right side, this banner image that advertises my, my, my image. So with the text tool, you've got the T there on the left, that's the, the text tool, the horizontal type tool. I'm going to start at the top right corner and click and hold and drag and draw a box. With the type tool, I'm drawing a box. I'm drawing this box that will be the maximum area where I will add text. I can use the text tool normally, but that text that I'm going to write may go over my graphic. If I make a bounding box of text like that, whatever I write here will stay in the box and not flow over other elements. I'm thinking I might want to also align to the right my text. We have some simple um, graphical or some text tools up there. I want to align it to the right. What I'm going to write is the unofficial SDCE app, and that I need to resize down. So what I would write is a little bit of advertising for this graphic, uh, for this app. This is going to be a graphic that advertises the app. So it could be like what I wrote up on the App Store, make up something new here. Keep up to date with the latest classes at San Diego Continuing Education. And because it's um, a graphic that I have a lot of control over, I can change different sizes and alignment and colors and everything. App feature. So we have a class schedule driving directions. Per 
personalization. So any sort of things I want to mention about the um, what the app does, we can do also something like by Victor Apps or whatever I called my development company. You can be creative with different colors of text, different font sizes, alignments. Once you've finished uh, typing, eventually then you want to click on the top right corner. You have um, up on the options bar, you have the check mark which locks in your changes. It's still fully editable later if you'd like. Then I locked in the changes and then um, you know, if you want to get even more creative, we have these create warped text effects, so we can make the text like curvy and wavy, and we have also to create three-dimensional versions of text. I'll keep it simple. I chose a different font, but I'm keeping it simple. I'll do a file save as First, I want to save my work in progress file. Save this on my flash drive. It's going to save as .psd first. And I want that. Remember, the PSD file is the Photoshop document, the work in progress document. Once I've got that saved, then I can work on the saving the Amazon ready version. So I'm going to save first this PSD version. Maximize compatibility. If that pops up, go ahead and you can click yes, OK. Then I'll go back to file, file um, export, save for web. The size is correct, the format is correct, but I want to remove the transparency. Removing transparency gives me the plain white background. Or I can choose a different background color under the mat. Black, white, or other. And I would say keep it simple because if you start to choose different colors and the default ones like white, it might be a little harder to, to read your text. Just make sure you turn off transparency. Now I'll save that. It's going to save as ping or PNG. That's the format that Amazon and Google Play would want. So I'll save that and I'll go back to Amazon and we've got the promotional image. Recommend it, but I'll say I highly recommend it. So upload, promo, Dot ping. It's going to upload the promo version. You see there, we have this wide graphic as a banner, a promotional image. This will show up in various places throughout Amazon. It's optional, but I recommend it. What is required are screenshots. Now these screenshots, we have several ways to, to capture them. It's going to depend on, on your device. If you're running on a virtual device, we can capture screenshots, but you need to be running on a virtual device 
with a screen size of at least 800 by 480. If you created the if you went through the device definitions like we did, we have a we have the 3.2 ADP2. Well, look at that. It's 320 by 480. It's too small. We can capture that screenshot as I'll as I'll show you how in a moment, and then upsample it. But again, if you start with a smaller graphic and make it larger, you often lose quality. In this particular lab, we have the Nexus 5 um, device definition. I believe this one has a good size already. Can we double check that? Oh, yeah. So um, the Nexus that's already there, that one's 1080 by 1920. So it's plenty big. It's the right size for the project, uh, that is, for what Amazon wants. So if you're using that smaller one, it's not going to really work. Um, there is a way when we do taco run or taco emulate Android, there is a way to specify which virtual device off the top of my head, I don't remember. I have to look it up. There's various um, flags that we can activate to force it to a particular device, uh, virtual device. You have to say its ABD name and such. I don't remember what it is. So it should automatically, perhaps the easiest way is to not create your own definition and then delete it from here so that there's only one Android device to choose from, and when I do taco emulate Android, it'll go with the Nexus. But I have a real device plugged in, so for me, it's a moot point. For you, um, you'll have to figure that out, which way you want to do it, and if you have trouble with that, we'll, we'll uh, check during the break. But what I need to do now is run my app, the last version of my app, in either the Nexus virtual device or my real device. I need to run it on a virtual device or real device so that I can do screenshots. Because running it on my real device, for example, is going to have the extra graphics of my device, like the back button and the um, you know antenna indicator and all of that to show it's on a real device. I could make up a graphic in Photoshop because Amazon is telling me the dimensions I need to work with. And sometimes you see these um, graphics that you know are a screenshot of a device, you know, the physical hardware. That's a little more effort. The way I want to do this then is I'm going to run my project in my virtual device. I've already got a copy of it on the device, so I'm just gonna run my, my copy off of my device. And one way that I can do screenshots is this was on a handout a while ago. One of the handouts about the Android device monitor. So what we want to do is open up the local disk C. We'll go back to the to the C drive. Then we'll go into the program files x86. Android. Android SDK, Tools, and Monitor.bat. The thing about the monitor is that if you've got other windows up, there might be a screen that appears there behind everything. It doesn't show up on the taskbar. So this happens to a lot of people. They're, they're waiting and waiting. It never came up. So they double-click monitor again, and then two instances will load. Five instances could load, actually. So if you double-click monitor and nothing happens, minimize all your windows, and you've probably got this waiting for you. Send stats to Google. Nah, that'll probably take up my bandwidth. So I'll turn it off and proceed. 
Now we'll, we'll see this that we saw a while ago. But now we, we need it for these screenshots. I've got my device running. My Motorola Moto E, which is the XT1528. And my app is currently running. So on that device, either real or virtual device should show up here. And I'm going to take screen capture. This isn't a live view, so if I go from, from screen to screen on my real device, it doesn't update here. So the point of the screenshot is Amazon wants you to uh, show off three to ten graphics to give people a sense of what your app looks like before they download it. So I'm thinking to display some of the you know, most enticing screens. Um, I don't have the latest version running. Oops. Run that really fast. So <clears throat> you would want to go to the to your different screens that you think are important looking and then uh, do a capture. as I get that one running up here. What I would recommend is uh, show off the, uh, the map screen. Uh, have, it, have it load up and populate and show that your, your, your app has map capability. So then you would capture the, the screenshot. You, you would click Save up there. I would also think about showing an example of the of the class schedule saving ability. Save a few classes and show the classes um, in the table. Screenshot that. Maybe screenshot one of the content screens. You can get inspiration from previous classmates. Let me show you here, for example. So this student has the home screen, one of these art class screens, computer screen the class saving feature. So when you do that screenshot, it captures the various aspects of your device. Notice here it shows the user's battery level and the time that they shot the picture. These screenshots here are again right off of your device. If you want to show, like you, you sometimes see on different app stores, Let's see if I can find this example here. If you want to show like a, a screenshot of the device, you have to do research on finding a um, you have to do research on finding a template. Well, even looking at something like LinkedIn here. Again, it's just a screenshot of, of the device showing it screen at a time. Maybe there's some other ones here. Okay, like this one. Notice, notice how Snapchat did their screenshots. They are a little bit more of a designed graphic, isn't it? It's the colors and the branding of Snapchat. It's a little ghost icon. It's a picture of the interface in a device which, you know, this generic shape here is a device. It's not even a real device, it's just a shape. And then it further does some branding. It's explaining that you snap, that you chat, and that you do stories. That's more effort. We're not really going to do that. That requires more work in Photoshop and such. Um, one way to do this is to try to find a, a sort of template for your device. You know, you can maybe go over to uh, I've got a Motorola, I could do Moto uh, E graphic template. I can go find a graphic of the device and use Photoshop to put my own screenshots into the, the device. 
a function like that. I could, I could copy that graphic, open it in Photoshop, cut out their screenshot, and after I've saved my screenshots, put mine in there. <coughs> takes a little bit more effort, but you know, it's a little bit more branding. Now, let me mention something here. This happened to me. It may not have happened to you, but this often happens when I teach this. I'm trying to run the latest version of my, of my project. I hadn't run it on my device yet. And it's giving me an error in reading through the, through the project. There's an error that says, key store file does not exist. Well, what happens is the first time you do taco build Android dash dash release it saves in the project that it's a release ready version now so mine is saying your JKS file is not in the folder that we expected and it shows a really weird path in that there's the path to my project and then platform Android dash dot 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 so it's putting in the reverse path in the path so for mine, it's complaining that it can't find my JKS file basically on, on the root of my project because we've got uh, in the Android, go back one level, go back another level, go back another. And I had it on a different drive anyway. I had it on the F drive on mine, and I'm now running on a G drive. So this happens commonly for, for, for people in this class. Um, even though I didn't specify, you know, I, I simply did Taco Run Android device. I didn't specify build release and it wants my JKS file so I need to tell it don't look for the JKS file and I need to remind myself where did it display that one of these JSON files somewhere thinks that I want the JKS file again. Release signing properties, I believe. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so for your information, I don't have it in any handout, but make a note of this. If you get an error that it wants your JKS file, even though you don't need to specify it at the moment, in your project, in your platforms folder, in the Android folder, there's a release signing dot properties file. It's a plain text file that I can open in Notepad. And it says your key store is here. This file is automatically generated. Do not modify this file. Your change will be erased. So in my case, this is getting in my way. Simply delete the release signing properties file and it shouldn't bother you at this moment. I'm not trying to create a release ready version just yet so this release signing dot properties is getting in my way. I'll delete that and now if I run taco again it won't it won't look for the JKS file because I'm not specifying it and the dot properties file is not looking for it. So I'm still a, a little bit behind. You guys are probably a little bit more ahead, but I'm just trying to capture these screenshots. Once I capture them, I want to confirm that they're the right size. Remember, we need them to be at least 480 by 800. Depending on your device, my particular physical device is actually slightly 
different than those dimensions. So as soon as I get mine to process, I'll show you, but I guess I can preview that right here. What I mean is that um, I'm going to view my, uh, my device, and if I save a screenshot, I'll just save a quick screenshot to the desktop. This uh, screenshot that was saved to my desktop, it's actually, in my case, Five forty by nine sixty. My particular screenshot is a little too large, so I'm going to need to resize it a little bit, or maybe crop it in Photoshop, depending on your device. It may be just fine, but I need to take that extra step. I check the size of my uh, graphic by doing right click onto the graphic and selecting properties at the bottom. I get the general properties of that graphic, and I want to go to the Details tab, and there it is. So not quite right. I need uh, 480 by 800. So I finally have my updated project running, so now I will capture these screenshots. I want to show the, the welcome screen, perhaps, so I'll save that one. You don't have to worry about changing the name at all. It gives it the name and the time. Save that. I want to show off what's also interesting. Maybe my customization screen personalize. I refresh that. It's going to be my customized screen. What will be even fun is something like calling it J Student. Customizing it with JStudent. Maybe show off one of these computer screens. calendar, anything you want. You've got up to 10 of them. So this is your chance to impress your potential users that might think about downloading this. So show off different aspects of the, of the project. Like I said, also the map. It's always impressive. map. And uh, classes, my classes. So for the for the class schedule saving feature, I've got it filled in, and I'm a, and like I'm acting like I'm filling it in, like it's real content. Like a real user is using it. So that's me setting it up. So that it looks interesting as I as I actually fill this in, and it'll capture exactly what's going on on my screen. So it's you know like an active user at that point. Let's save that, and I think I've got uh, six or so screenshots that represent my project. So that's the whole point of using the the Android device monitor. Once I've saved those screenshots, I can exit that to free up some memory. And as I said, my screenshots from my particular 
um, device are not quite sized right. So I'm going to need to open them in Photoshop to finish them up. Depending on your device, you might have to do image, image size, or canvas size. Probably the easiest would be image size. And most likely, I'll have to turn off this lock to force it to the dimensions that Amazon wants. Because if, if I put this for 800 tall, well, I need 480 wide. And mine is shrinking to 450. I try to put that at 480 wide, well then now it's too tall. It's 853 instead of 800. I could further crop it, changing canvas, but I think the easiest way here is to just turn off the lock and force it to the, to the dimensions that Amazon wants, 480 by 800. It's going to skew it slightly. There it is there. It's slightly different. It's a little uh, wider, but not a big deal. Graphically still looks nice because, again, I started with a larger image, scroll, scaling it down. Looks just fine. And I like that it's got sort of like the Android operating system items, you know, the antenna and all of that. That can all be cropped out and changed. But since this is already a ping, I don't, I don't need to do that export. Here I would just do file save. Save it as the current file type, which is ping. It'll just do a plain old save. And I changed, saved a bunch of screenshots, so I'll have to do this a bunch of times. Image, image size, change it down to eight, 480 by 800, turn off constrained proportions, and then just control S to save. Close and repeat. I resized each one of my screenshots. It wasn't quite right coming straight out of my device. It was larger than Amazon needed, and actually Amazon's very picky because even though it was larger than what it needed, it needs it in these dimensions. 800 by 480, 1024, etc. Mine did not fit in any of those dimensions, so I had to resize it. And the easiest way is just to resize it out of proportion to fit it into those dimensions. I do like, even though I don't, even though I don't like Snapchat, I do like the Snapchat branding, and I like that they did this to show off. Here's how your app looks like, but that takes more work. And then I can return to Amazon and start to upload these, these screenshots. I have to do it one at a time. Oh, and now it did log me out, so I need to log back in. all the way back out here. I need to go back to edit my app again. So I need to go back to edit those screenshots.
Once you've uploaded your screenshots, you can rearrange them. I just uploaded them in the order that I took them. But maybe I want to show the most compelling things first. If you want to rearrange them, you can grab them by that uh, uh, move uh, icon and move them in the order that you want. And if you don't want the screenshot anymore, you can click the little uh, X to remove it. You have three minimum, ten maximum screenshots to show off your, your particular app. I'm going to save what I have so far, and I have all green. I'm not going to submit it just yet, we're about to take a break, because I, I still want to cover a little bit about the optional video, promotional video. So we'll take our break, I'll talk about video as a form of branding, and then we'll probably be there ready to, to submit. So it's 7.12, we'll take a break till 7.22. Almost ready to submit this, and we'll see how that works. So we'll be back at 722.